Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shah Weekly. In this video, we're going to learn how you can create a global error view or how you can present an error view globally for your Sophia applications. When you're writing Sophia applications, sometimes your application will throw an error. And how do we display that error to the user? And it would be nice if that error management code or displaying the error code is just at one place, not at 10 different places. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. The first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to write the code, all of this in the same file so that I can easily share it, but you will create different files for each thing. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a struct to represent the error. And I'm going to call this error wrapper. Error wrapper is a term that is used also in the uh, tutorials by Apple. So you can call it error wrapper, you can call it anything else. It's going to wrap the error. So the first thing we will going to have is the actual error that is being thrown. Apart from that, we will have, we will provide some sort of a guidance. So let's go ahead and say guidance. Probably I've misspelled this. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this because I cannot even spell guidance. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it. There we go. Okay, so now we have the error wrapper. It takes in the error, it takes in the guidance. Another thing that we can do is we can make it identifiable so that whenever we throw an error, we, we can actually identify it. Well, not identify it, we can, I mean, if there's a looping going on, we can use that, uh, you know, we can make it bindable also in those cases. So we're providing it some sort of an ID. Identifiable simply means that if we want to, you know, display it or we want to show it, this is uniquely going to identify the error wrapper for that particular error. Okay, that's great. What will be our next step? Well, our next step would be to create some sort of an error view. So I'm just going to go ahead and create an error view. You should probably create this in a different file, but I'm just going to go ahead and create it right over here. Error view is nothing more than a SOF UI view. Okay. And this is kind of up to you, whatever you want to display in the error view. So I'm just going to go ahead and say error has occurred in the application. Okay. And in order for the error view to actually work, we will need to have error wrapper. This means the error view is going to be dependent on the error wrapper. And without the error wrapper, it's not going to work. It would be a good idea to preview our error view. So let's go ahead and create a struct for error view previews, which is going to give us some view. And we can use static var previews, sorry, not some view, preview provider, because this is a preview. So previews, and we're gonna go ahead and say error view. And now we need to pass in the error wrapper in this case. So error wrapper depends on the error. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a very simple sample error. I'm gonna go ahead and say sample error, which is of type error. And you can go ahead and put anything you want. So I'm just gonna say operation failed. It's just a sample error. It doesn't really matter. It's only created for the preview to work. So error wrapper, and now we can go ahead and pass in the error, which is the sample error dot error, operation failed. And we can simply say operation has failed, something like that. Uh, please restart or launch the app to continue, or please launch the app again, or something like that, some sort of a guidance that we can provide. Let's go to the error view preview. So we'll see what it looks like. It kind of looks like this, that's fine. Now, one of the things we can do is since we have access to the error wrapper, we can go ahead and display it, error wrapper dot some sort of the error and dot localized description. Okay, so now we can actually see the error. We can go ahead and add a little bit of a padding to it if you want. Okay, that's fine too. And then we can finally print out some sort of a guidance. So error wrapper dot guidance. 
and we can change the font to it if you want to. We can simply say, let's say caption or call out or something like that. And now all the styling and all that is kind of like up to you. If you want to change the styling, you can definitely do that. I can go ahead and make this kind of like a headline and give it padding on the bottom. So it's not like completely sticking up. So kind of like that. Okay. So our error view is fine. Error wrapper is fine. Now time is to throw the error. Okay. So let's start with the very basics. How would we display the error for the content view? And then we will move on to how we can make it more globally. Always start with simple stuff. So in the content view, if we want to show our error view, uh, we must have error wrapper also. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a state variable, error wrapper, which is error wrapper. And by the way, again, this concept of error wrapper, if you search for Scrum Dinger application, uh, that is where you can find the error wrapper and how Apple is using it. Let's go back to the content view. So we have the error wrapper. Um, right now we can't even throw any error, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add a button. I'll say throw error. And we don't really have any error to throw also at this point, right? So we can create some sort of a dummy error. So let's say if we create the error and it can be any error. So let's say authentication error. Obviously we don't really have any authentication, but just some sort of an error. And we can say, we can say invalid credentials, that's the error. So I can go ahead and probably throw the error at this point. So I can say throw and authentication error dot invalid credentials, all right? Now we're calling this, we're throwing the error, but we are in the context of something completely different. So let's go ahead and call a function. Let's just call it authenticate and create this function. Authenticate. And this function itself can throw the error. And now we can go ahead and throw the error. We can say authentication error dot invalid credentials. All right, and over here you can see that we have this function, but this is not really being, uh, you know, not really being added anywhere, right? I mean, we have to make sure that if you are calling this, we have to make sure that somewhere we are handling this. So either you can call the authenticate function or the way that we were doing it before, that is also perfectly fine. I just created authenticate function to make it nicer and easier. We have to call it with try. So this is going to call or throw the error. We are going to catch the error. So all of this part is fine. Now when we catch the error, it is at this time that we are going to set the error wrapper. So error wrapper was initially nil, but now we can go ahead and set the error wrapper. And we already have access to the error because we are inside the catch. So I can simply pass in the error and some sort of a guidance that I can provide. So please check your credentials and try again, or something like that. All of this text for guidance can come from some other place. Maybe you have a JSON file, XML file, maybe you have a hard-coded constants. Anything will work, all right? So this is going to get set, and now we can go ahead and see that how we can display a sheet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the sheet, passing in the error wrapper. And we will get the error wrapper, which is already unwrapped. And now we can display the error view, passing in the error wrapper. So this part of the sheet, because the one of the other overloads of the sheet modifier takes in the is presented, but if you use the item one, you can pass in, this can be a nullable thing, you can pass in a binding, and if this binding is actually going to change, then the closure of the content is gonna get fired and you will be given the unwrapped version of this particular binding. So you'll get the error wrapper. Okay, so now it's a good time to check it out. If I say throw error, there we go. It actually shows me the actual error view. If I throw the error, it shows me error view. So this is working perfectly fine, all right? So this is good. The only problem with this approach 
is in other views, if I want to display a sheet or some other control, some other view, I have to do this again and again and again and again, okay? So now the question is, how can we make sure that we don't have to do this all the time? One of the ways we can do that is by creating an error state. And this will be an observable object. And the publish property in our case will be become the error wrapper, which will be error wrapper, nullable. And now we have the error state, right? Now, one thing we can do with this error state, since this is observable object, we can inject it into our content view. So I can go over here and I can say environment object, and I can go ahead and say that, okay, this will be the error state. So there we go, we can actually inject that. You can also create, like if we, if you want to, you can also create it as a state object, which I'll show you. Now, all of the stuff that I'm doing over here, this is only going to work in the previews, okay? So if you do want it to work in your actual application, you have to go to the app file and do those changes over here. So I'm gonna go ahead over here and create a state object, error state, error state. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and inject it as an environment object. So this is the actual application. And this, it is at this point that I can go ahead and use the sheet also. So the same exact code that we were writing for the sheet, we can actually use it over here. So this will become error state dot error wrapper. We will hopefully get the error wrapper. And now we have just one global place to handle this particular error. So we can say error view, pass in the error wrapper. So now if I go back to the content view, I can actually remove a couple of different things. I can remove this sheet because now we have the sheet somewhere else. And instead of this state variable, we may have to end up using the environment object because now it's coming from the global. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say environment object, private var error state, which is error state. Okay, and this particular error wrapper will become something different. It will become error state dot error wrapper. Great. Let's go ahead and run the application. And this time I'm gonna run it in a simulator so we can see all the code that we have written over here in our learn app firing. If you don't have this code, then obviously it's not gonna work. So let's go ahead and run it in a simulator. And another thing to mention over here is that I am simply using this error view, which shows you, or this sheet, which actually shows the error in a sheet, right? you don't have to use this. I mean, if you don't want to, you can simply go ahead and use any kind of a view for this application. Now, one of the problem I'm facing over here is kind of weird because it, uh, it actually is going something weird. So I will have to take a look at what exactly is going on over here and why is it you know, not working. So let me double check this. Okay, I just had to restart the, the simulator. And now I can click on throw error, and there we go. So it works exactly like before. The only thing that we have changed is that all of the handling and showing of the sheet is right there, like right over in the app file. So you don't have to change it. You don't have to use a sheet with every single view. You can just go ahead and use a sheet or any other kind of a control. You don't have to use sheet. You can use some other control that you're going to be injecting or doing something with it. So all of that stuff can go right there in your app file. And that is how you can actually create application that when throws the error, those errors are displayed by handling them kind of like globally and displaying them in a place where it is accessed globally. Okay, so there you have it. I uh, hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses. You can see that I have quite a lot of courses, 43 different courses probably, 
for iOS development, check out my latest course on building a Reminders app clone using Swift UI and Core Data. A lot of good stuff. I mean, notification and uh, you know MV pattern and a lot of cool stuff we, we did in this course. Then if you just want to learn Swift UI, this is a course for you. Uh, intermediate, Swift, and also Core Data. If you just want to learn Core Data, you can check out this course. Um, all the courses, you can always go to my website, which is azamsharp.com and go to the courses and you can see a list of all the courses. So if you go from here, you will be able to see the current deals that are going on. So if I go ahead and open up this course, let's go ahead and open up in the incognito. And you can see there, here we go. There's a deal going on right now. So always make sure that you are going to the courses using the links that I'm providing. And this link for my courses is always there in your YouTube video. So definitely check that out. All right. And uh, thank you so much. That's pretty much it. Hope you have enjoyed it.